Hey there. Welcome back to our JavaScript tutorial series. Today we are diving into the exciting world of APIs and how to use them with JavaScript. APIs or application programming interfaces play a crucial role in enabling communication between different software systems. In this video, we will start from the basics and explore the different type of APIs. So let's get started. First thing first, what exactly is an API? An API is like a bridge that allows different software applications to talk to each other. It provides a set of rules and protocols that define how software components should interact. Think of it as a language that lets two systems communication and share information effectively. Now, let's look at the different types of APIs. One common type is web APIs. These APIs are specially designed for web development and allow websites or web applications to interact with external services or retrieve data. For example, you can use a web API to fetch weather data, display social media feeds, or even process online payments. Imagine you are building a weather application. Instead of creating your own weather database, you can simply make a request to a weather API and it will provide you with the necessary weather information in a structured format like JSON. Here is an example of how you can use JavaScript to make an API request to fetch weather data from a weather API. In this code snippet, we are using the fetch function to send a GET request to the weather API's endpoint. We provide the necessary parameters such as our API key and the location. The API responds with the weather data which we can then process and use in our application. Another type of API that has gained popularity in recent years is RESTful APIs. REST stands for Representational State Transfer and it allows a set of principles for building APIs. RESTful APIs are widely used in web development because they are simply scalable and can work with various programming languages. RESTful APIs are based on the concept of resource. These resources can be anything – users, products, articles, you name it. The API exposes different endpoints or URLs that represent these resources. To interact with the API, you send HTTP requests to these endpoints such as GET, POST, PUT or DELETE to perform different operations on the resources. Let's say we have a RESTful API for a blog. To retrieve the list of articles, we can send a GET request to the articles endpoint. Here is an example of how you can do that in JavaScript. In this code snippet, we are making a GET request to the article's endpoint of the API. We include headers such as the content type and authorization for authentication purposes. The API responds with the list of articles which we can use in our application. Lastly, we have SOAP APIs which stand for Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP is a protocol for exchanging structured information in a web service using XML. SOAP APIs are known for their robustness and support for more complex operation, but they can be more challenging to work with compared to web or RESTful APIs. SOAP APIs define a specific XML-based message format for requests and responses. They often require more configuration to a restrict contract defined by the API provider. While SOAP APIs have their use cases, they are not as prevalent in modern web development as web or RESTful APIs. Making a SOAP API request in JavaScript requires additional library or tools that can handle XML parsing and construction. 
Due to the complexity, it is beyond the scope of this video. However, if you come across SOAP APIs in the future, remember that they follow a different approach and may require specialized libraries or frameworks. Now let's talk about the basics of HTTP methods. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is the foundation of communication on the web. HTTP methods define the actions we can perform when interacting with an API. The four main HTTP methods you will commonly encounter are GET, POST, PUT and DELETE. GET is used to retrieve data from an API. It is like asking the API for information. POST is used to send data to an API, often used for creating new resources. PUT is used to update or replace existing data in the API. DELETE is used to remove data from the API. Now let's see how we can make HTTP request using JavaScript. There are two popular methods for making request, fetch and XML HTTP request. Fetch is a newer, more modern way of making request, while XML HTTP request has been around for a while. Here is an example of using fetch to make a GET request to an API and retrieve some data. In this code, we use fetch to send a GET request to this endpoint. We then handle the response using the dot then method and convert the response to JSON format. Finally, we log the retrieved data to the console. Similarly, we can use fetch to make a POST request and send data to an API. In this code, we define an object called data with some user information. We then use fetch to make a POST request to the user endpoint of the API. We include the request headers and the data as the request body, which we convert to JSON using json.stringify. Finally, we handle the response and log the created user's data to the console. Now let's talk about handling API responses. When we make a request to an API, we receive a response that contains important information. This information includes status code, headers, and the actual data we requested. Status codes indicate the status of the request and response. For example, a status code of 200 means the request was successful, while a status code starting with 4 or 5 indicates an error. Headers provide additional information about the response such as content type, encoding, and more. Let's modify our previous fetch example to handle the response more effectively. In this code, we check the response status using response.ok. If the status is ok, we log request successful, otherwise we log request failed along with the status code. 
we also log the response headers. Finally, we convert the response to JSON and log the data. Lastly, let's talk about parsing and extracting data from API responses. Most APIs return data in JSON or XML format. To work with this data in JavaScript, we need to parse and extract the information we need. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is a lightweight data format that's easy to read and write. JavaScript provides built-in functions like json.parse to parse JSON data and convert it into JavaScript objects. Here is an example of parsing JSON data from an API response. In this code, we use response.json to parse the JSON data. We can then access and work with the parsed data as JavaScript objects. And that's it for understanding APIs and how to use them with JavaScript. We covered the basic of HTTP methods, making HTTP requests with fetch or XML HTTP request, handling API responses and parsing data in JSON format. Remember, practicing these concepts by following along and experimenting with APIs will enhance your understanding. Keep up the great work and see you in the next video.